A computer is an electronic machine that uses instructions or programs to accept data input given to it and to process it to produce information or output. In 1959, Howard Aiken developed punched paper tapes to be used as an input medium. He also invented the first electromechanical computer called Mark I. In 1938, Claude Shannon demonstrated the similarity between logical circuits and Boolean algebra. He also formalized information theory, which allows precise measurement of information delivered through a communication channel. The second generation of computer was an upgrade of the first generation and they used transistors for power generation with less heat production. There was an increase in memory size to 32 kilobytes with a speed of up to 300,000 instructions per second. In this lesson, we shall learn more about types of classification of computers and computer applications. Computers are available in different shapes, sizes and weights. Due to these different shapes and sizes, they perform different sorts of jobs. A computer that is used in a home differs in size and shape from the computer being used in a hospital, and the classifications make it easy to identify the right computer to acquire for use in different places. Here we are going to introduce different classifications of computers one by one. We will discuss what are in these classifications and what job they perform. Physical size takes into consideration the actual size of the computer, while processing capability classification categorizes computers with their processing capability, with consideration of the power it uses. Computers that exist in this classification include the mainframe computer, mini computer, microcomputer, and the supercomputer. This is because they have different sizes and have different processing capabilities. Purpose classification of computers takes into consideration the reason for their making. In this category, there exist general purpose and special purpose computers.
Functionality classification takes into consideration the type of data that the computer can accept and manipulate. Digital computers and analog computers are in this category. Digital computers use digits 0 and 1 to represent data and uses partly automatic procedures to perform computation on information, while the analog computer is an electric device that processes data in continuous state without converting into digital form. In a typical electronic analog computer, the inputs are converted into voltages that may be added or multiplied using specially designed circuit elements. Examples of analog computers include the slide rule that facilitate multiplication, division, and other functions. Computers are used in everyday life to make it easier and faster to process data to information. Some important application areas are educational institutions, computers are used in everyday life to make it easier and faster to process data to information. Some important application areas are educational institutions, Computers are used in everyday life to make it easier and faster to process data to information. Some important application areas are educational institutions, computers are used in everyday life to make it easier and faster to process data to inform in this in this lesson we shall learn more about a computer laboratory we shall define a computer laboratory and learn some of the ways of setting up the computer laboratory we shall also study the rules we should observe and safety precautions to undertake while working in the computer laboratory. How do you differentiate a computer laboratory from other laboratories? A computer laboratory is a room which has been prepared to facilitate the installation of computers with a conducive environment for teaching and learning computer studies. There are various factors that should be considered when setting up a computer lab. One of them is security. Security is a very important factor because the lab should be located where the computers are safe against theft. Secondly, computers use electric power and therefore availability of power should be considered. Thirdly, the number of computers to be installed and the number of people to occupy the laboratory should be considered so that the room does not look congested or small when it is finally set up. The rules that should be observed in the laboratory include 1. Shutting down the computer using the correct procedure. Shutting computers using the wrong procedure could lead to a warm boot, which can damage the computer. 2. Not allowing unauthorized persons into the laboratory. Unauthorized persons in the laboratory can interfere with the setting of the lab and damage computers since they do not have the orientation about using the facilities in the laboratory. 3. Not allowing foodstuff and fluids into the computer. Foodstuff and fluids should not be allowed into the lab since drops of foodstuff and fluids into the computer system can lead to damage of the electric components of the computer. 4. Avoid unnecessary movement in the laboratory to prevent interfering with the cables and not opening the computer parts without permission. 5. Computers require good care in order for them to last long. 
Some of the safety precautions that should be observed include 1. Covering the computer system to avoid dust settling on the components. Dust causes the computer system to overheat and this leads to damage. 2. Locking and fitting the laboratory with a burglar-proof grill. This takes care of any theft that may take place in the laboratory. 3. Insulating and laying down cables to avoid exposing them. Cabling in the laboratory should be done well, making sure that they are insulated to avoid data communication interference. Computers require good care in order for them to last long. Some of the safety precautions that should be observed include 1. Covering the computer system to avoid dust settling on the components. Dust causes the computer system to overheat and this leads to damage. 2. A computer mouse is an input device which is used in conjunction with the keyboard to input data. It controls the movement of the pointer or cursor on the screen and the buttons on top of the mouse are pressed or clicked to perform specific tasks. A computer mouse is an input device which is used in conjunction with the keyboard to input data. It controls the movement of the pointer or cursor on the screen and the buttons on top of the mouse are pressed or clicked to perform specific tasks. Clicking is pressing and quickly releasing the buttons, that is the right and the left buttons. This process is done to select an item from an option. Double clicking is pressing the left button twice in a rapid succession. Double clicking is used to initiate an action, such as opening a file. Right clicking is pressing and releasing the right button. This process is done to display command menus that are specific to the item selected. Drag and Drag and drop is a technique used for moving items from one location to another on the screen. This is done by clicking on the item without releasing, then you slide the mouse to a new location and then release. The starting up process is also referred to as booting. During booting, the computer checks all the basic parts to determine whether they are working properly. Booting can be classified into two, cold boot and warm boot. Cold boot. Cold booting is when a computer that was off is started or switched on. So anytime you turn your computer on after it's been turned off, you're doing a cold boot. Warning. Avoid frequent cold booting. This causes the electronic parts to contract and expand rapidly, thereby damaging them. Warm boot. A warm boot is the resetting of a computer that's already running, like when you hit the start button shut down and then select the reset option. Shutting down. This is the process where a computer which is on is turned off. The procedure to turn off is click the start button, click shut down, select the shut down the computer option by clicking on it, click the yes button to confirm your selection, 
Never just switch off your computer. You may lose unsaved information and damage your computer's hard disk. A computer mouse is an input device which is used in conjunction with the keyboard to input data. It controls the movement of the pointer or cursor on the screen and the buttons on top of the mouse are pressed or clicked to perform specific tasks. Warm booting is the process where a computer that is on is forced to restart by use of the restart button or restart option in the turn off option for Windows 2000 and later versions. Function of the keys 1. Alphanumeric keys consist of letters, numbers, symbols, and punctuation marks. Other keys in this group include caps lock key, used for changing between lowercase and uppercase, enter or return key, used to execute commands and to start a new line in word processing programs, spacebar, create a space between words when typing, backspace key, deletes characters from the right to the left on the same line, tab key, moves the text cursor on set intervals. Three, cursor movement and editing keys. Cursor movement keys move the cursor from one place to another on the display screen. The cursor is the indicator on the display screen that lets the user know where the next entry will be made. Four, special computer operation keys. Keyboards have many special keys that let you complete more tasks with your keyboard. These are in conjunction with other keys to issue commands that are specific to the application program being used. They include the shift key, control key or CTRL, and the alternate key or ALT. Sit upright, place the material to be typed on your left, place both hands on the keyboard's home keys, use all the 10 fingers to start typing slowly at first, speed will be improved gradually with a lot of practice.